Well, hello everybody. Welcome to another tutorial. Um, today we're gonna be going over how to make a modular staff in Polystyle. Um, we're just gonna make a couple of top parts, a couple of bottom parts, and a few different styles of the stick. Um, we're gonna start by setting up a single vert and extruding it all the way up on the z-axis. If you don't have the single vert, you can find it on the add-ons tab. Um, then we're just gonna create some empties after moving the origin or the cursor uh, to the top point. We're gonna call it top. So these are gonna be our uh, anchor points for the modular parts. Uh, we have a, a bottom one as well. So after a few subdivisions, we want to uh, give the staff just a little bit of style, uh, moving them vert around and adding subdivision modifier along with the skin modifier will give this kind of log feel to it. So we can just duplicate this one and gonna straighten it out. So it's a straight regular staff, not nah, with the wood stylized feel. And we're gonna duplicate it again, make the third staff uh, body and do some subdivisions to give it another style. Um, you just can play around with this. It's just doing uh, extrusions and moving verts around. So. Um, extruding a little bit out, make it like a branch, uh, give it that maybe, I don't know, shamanistic feel to it. So now we're gonna use these anchor points, these empties, and gonna move our cursor there and then we can um, add cube. So add this cube and it's gonna be the top part of the staff. We're just gonna do just a random design here. And the idea is to show you how you can just use these anchor points to create the top and the bottom part of the staff and uh, have it always be in the same position. So doing just a few edits here, um, making some loops to create indentations, give it some style to it. Um, it's probably a good idea just to get a couple of references when you're doing this so you can um, have, you know, like an idea of where to go. Uh, so a little bevel uh, with a control B is to bevel those edges a little bit. Now we're gonna do a, a cleanup after applying the skin modifier. So when we apply the skin modifier, the skin modifier kind of tends to create a lot of loops and that's okay in, in a lot of cases, but we want it to be a little bit more on the low poly side. So uh, just activate cavity to be able to see the edges a little bit better, but then we just want to do some cleanup on these staff or wood part to lower the poly count. So moving our cursor to the lower part, let's just create another cube to make um, the bottom part of the staff. It could be anything. I'm just gonna go for um, something metallic at the bottom, like the lower part of a hammer or something. And again, just keep in mind that um, you can do use this stuff for almost anything. Just create some empties in the exact position where you want things to meet and you have your and you use them as anchor points when you are creating new objects and new meshes for it so i want to grab these faces and um, separate them with the p key and i want to do something a little bit more dynamic for this top part and add a shape key and just kind of move these around uh, to form some kind of breakage. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that you just 
kind of use the power it kind of breaks open and you see legs and stuff but and and, and this is just a, a way to show you that you can do certain things so now let's kind of polish this other wood area or wood part and just uh, kind of want to do some elvish feel to it and have this branch court like uh, have the control all, all around the staff itself make it look a little bit more magical again these are just random style ideas that are just coming to mind at the moment and just to show you that you can do this with multiple or different styles of the staff um, you want to make sure that your anchor point the area close to the anchor point is as straight as possible so when you change the objects the top part or the bottom part the you know the stick part is gonna go in the center of the top part or the bottom part if it's kind of slanted to one uh, one way or the other it might just look off so uh, you can also uh, make the the end parts of this of the staff uh, shorter or make them smaller so it kind of uh, bulge in, inside and it allows for more space now uh, I'm here trying to get the thickness to fit the style that I'm going for <clears throat> and just polishing a little bit of the the thickness of the branches and I'm gonna do again just a, a little stylization just call like a swirl here and kind of looks like a lamppost as well uh, which hey it's cool you can make a, a lamppost uh, pack or uh, a motor load lamppost pack with this technique I was just thinking it's maybe like a, a very odd spooky uh, maybe which kind of staff or something like that and again like I mentioned the lower part or whatever is touching the other anchor any of the anchor points you want it to be a little bit more straight so it just goes right into the object that you have on the anchor point yep that's cool uh, maybe we can add something to this branch here I'm thinking maybe a lamp so let's grab this top part here and kind of duplicate it and scale it and set it up where we want it to be and add like a string on top yep we just need to extrude that out and make a, a few loops on top to maybe make it seem like there's a, a it's tied up you know so always you can use um, the same method you're working on you can always create like, extrusions and you can use those in your in, in the whole uh, style like for example we're gonna grab this here we're gonna uh, separate it and we are going to use it as the rope or the tie string just to uh, make it larger and scale it so it's uh, it fits kind of the branch and duplicate it and create a couple of them and just make that make them feel like it's a, it's a tie up I guess <laughs> just uh, play with the scale rotations etc whenever you're doing it you're gonna, gotta try out different things and see why it looks good so yep this looks fine so we have our kinda tie up in the polystyle lamp here on this lamppost slash staff um, let's create a loop here and a seam just to be able to select it after I move it all the way inside I want to cut this top part which we're not gonna need that does just uh, unnecessary geometry that we can get rid of and that's cool that's fine right there nice so as you can see you can have multiple ideas you can really just go crazy with it just keep in mind those things um, that you want to have your anchor points dictate how is it gonna look you can use this for a sword you can use this 
even for making the modular shields or whatnot. It's a very, very simple and easy to use technique. Okay, so again, uh, when you use skin modifier, it's always a good idea to clean. When you have a, a, a bend in the that's coming up, you want to leave three loops. It's important you want to leave three loops because that's wanna that's gonna give it the enough geometry to bend right, and, and keep that bend how it's looking at the uh, at the point. If you get rid of you just leave one, you'll see that most of it will change. Not most cases it doesn't change a lot, but in some cases you really don't want to. In this area here, like there's only three per bend, so if we get rid of those, the 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 feel that it has at this moment is not gonna stay. So yep, just keep that in mind. It's looking good. So you can also, I mean, I have the subdivision modifier. If you want to go into a more low poly uh, feel, more squarish, you don't need the subdivision modifier. So just again, it's a. This is more about the technique and to show you that what you can do with it. So remember to always keep your objects named. If you make packs at some point like I do that have 100, 200 pieces, you want to have your things with a logical naming convention. So just always keep that in mind. Else you're going to be just <laughs> going all around the project looking for things and clicking here and clicking over there. So I'm just uh, merging these up and uh, so you gotta get rid of some of the modifiers when you're merging else things just gonna go crazy. So let's do another one. Let's move our cursor here to the top part and let's just do another top part. I'm thinking uh, something like an orb. Let's lower the vertices count here a little bit and just create this orb and I, f I feel like I want to give it um, like a shape key as well so it, I don't know maybe has something inside of it let's grab this lower part here maybe make like a base yeah let's extrude it scale it and just have that as a base there maybe even kind of yeah make that like the lower part indented so the wood goes all the way inside and this is just from the uh, top of my mind at the moment so <laughs> if it looks so crap, uh, horrible then uh, that's that's why it, it is all right so again let's do more cleaning getting rid of all those unnecessary edges and always remember to keep uh, the middle loop of the bend and if you want a more um, smooth bend leave three of them that way whenever you delete those the bend will stay the way it was Cleaning up meshes um, super important if what you're doing is for a game engine. So, in spending some a little bit of time going over the unnecessary edges and verts and loops and all those things will save you a lot of time and headaches optimizing your project. So, keep that in mind. Just try to get rid of as much as you can without sacrificing the look if it's you know unnecessary. Okay, so they look good. We can change these parts. Now let's do something with this sphere thing. Uh, let's kind of maybe make a, a seam here. Get kind of separate the top part from the lower part, and then maybe put another orb inside. Um, so using V, you can separate um, whatever you have selected. 
Now, now I'm just gonna grab the edge and use F to create faces. Let's add shape key. And maybe just kind of just move it up. Yeah, I gotta create those faces down there first. Perfect. So yeah, it's kind of just it just kind of levitates a little bit, and then it, it has a, a, an orb inside. Maybe it grows. The orb grows inside whenever it's uh, it's activated the shape key. So I think that's cool. Um, yep, this looks fine. Okay, so. Let's go work on doing another bottom part here. Uh, first, we want to grab our anchor, move our cursor to the selected, and then we can deploy or add our cube. And we can maybe let's add subdivision modifier to make it like a literal um, sphere around here. And kind of, I'm gonna, I'm thinking of inserting a few big bolts. Kind of make it like a hammerish um, bottom part. I'm just grab all these guys and yep, and short inward create those. Change so we can everything each one of them goes individually extruded and make it like a little bit of a larger lower part. I think I also should kind of fix those bolts as well, make them a little bit more bolty. Yep, flipping it looks much better. Okay, yeah, let's create these loops and give it a more uh, tight look, like it has some bolts in it. Perfect, this looks good. Um, flipping is just Control M and selecting your axis. So I did Control M and Z to flip this. Now I think it's time to do some UV mapping here. So we're just gonna go around and selecting edges and adding uh, some seams to them. Um, seams is just basically creating cuts so you can have your object expanded or uh, span all across a 2D plane and that way to, uh, the machine can understand where to drop textures and whatnot. So, but these objects are low poly and I'm totally probably just gonna use a, a palette, a color palette and this just gonna, um, the, the UV unwrap doesn't necessarily have to be uh, very detailed or well, or well done, but sometimes I prefer just to do a good UV map and make sure that if I ever wanted to go into a more hand painted or textured So like I mentioned um, We're gonna make another Sphere and just put it inside these other sphere that we made before and I'm thinking yeah it's just kind of so I made the sphere and the uh, shape key and so in the in the basics in the basic shape key it, it appears like it doesn't exist so I made it on the second one so whenever I activate the sphere it's gonna kind of create the sphere from nothing if I would have made it on the basic it would have just been there uh, in both um, shape key so just a kind of trick if you want to do something similar and so we're just gonna add some quick texturing to test out the idea and we're just gonna start unwrapping everything let's go and make sure our UV maps are looking good yep this all look good so I think we can add a bevel modifier to this and give it a little bit more style. We want to maintain 
and part saving on pie count so the bevel is not necessary it's just uh, aesthetics at this point it's not gonna be looked in detail it's fine okay so that wrap there is good uh, let's make sure we check all the other ones that when you unwrap them you have something that you can work with later down the road um, you might need to fix some of the seams and this is more of a trial and error there is not a one a recipe to do it just one I notice I have some back faces or just faces inside the mesh that I don't need so this is part of cleaning up when you're doing UV you might get some artifacts in your seams that you don't understand and most of the times they're just hitting faces or objects inside your mesh uh, so I think the lamp could use a little bit of detail so I'm creating this lower part here like most lamps have and give it some texture as well just try it out after you lay out all the seams Okay, so seems are good. All the you get options like uh, angled and conformal, and you want to try and check them. Um, they, to be honest, I've never found like a specific way they behave. So it uh, really depends on the model you're working with. So I try both to always make sure um, I, I I'm grabbing the the best one the best layout option again just dropping some textures here materials not textures just dropping materials and um, applying some shine and specular to it okay so here we have it we got a staff set up got three sticks and we got two different tops and so this is it for this tutorial i hope that you enjoyed it if you did subscribe leave a comment drop a like if you didn't also leave a comment let me know why so i can improve on the videos again thank you so much for your support and there's a couple of links below on the description that you might want to check out cheers Thank you to all my Patreons for your support. This is all possible because of you.